This is a creeping menace from a mounting wave of no deposit, no return, throw away everything way of life. This is garbage. Cleverly engineered packaging is burying us. It's a messy mess. We just want someone, somehow, to take this waste away. Millions of tons per day is difficult to sweep under the nation's rug. No one wants to come to grips with it. created a perpetual waterfall of refuse that we must face up to. Once upon a time, eons ago, our world was very beautiful. The air was pure. The forests were verdant. It was before the advent of man. But of course, man did appear and immediately began to distribute litter. It really wasn't much, but there it was. Garbage. <laughs> Nature was able to keep her balance by supplying a sort of built-in disposal arrangement. Centuries passed. Man by now had banded into towns for protection and social pursuits. As his numbers multiplied, his wants became more sophisticated. <laughs> Disposal hadn't been completely solved. And so, to the present moment, he seldom throws refuse out of second-story windows anymore, but he's often prone to be quite casual about the rights of others. <laughs> Unless garbage and refuse is disposed of, if left to accumulate, it can get pretty bad. Let's review unsupervised dumping. These conditions still exist. A single cubic foot of ripe garbage can produce 70,000 flies. Depending on the point of view, garbage can be both interesting and even delicious. These are ideal conditions for raising large families. What about that car? Each year, we must find space for over six million abandoned autos that currently litter the countryside. How about that, sports fans? about 25 billion bottles, 50 billion cans each year. We're caught in a feverish wave of throwaway plastics, aluminum cans, and glass containers that are so well designed, they give our rubbish a durability that's leading to disposal desperation. This is a sort of nightmare. Let's burn it. Positively, no open dump burning, say the air pollution people. Burning is hazardous and physically dangerous. Aerosol cans often explode like hand grenades. Open dump burning, frankly, it stinks. What can we do with it? The area of our immediate concern is King County and the city of Seattle 
in the state of Washington. King County uses the landfill method, which is highly regarded as the best in dollar-for-dollar -dollar results. Hayes Evans is the director of sanitary operations for King County. Mr. Evans, a man of comprehensive experience in all phases of public health work, and a registered sanitarian, faced a combination of problems, a phenomenal growth, the analysis of population shifts, and changes resulting from freeway construction dictated a complete overhaul of the King County disposal system. There are about a million and a half people in this area, many of whom contribute to the county's disposal problem. After bulldozers have spread the refuse, and the compactor has it well mashed down, the earth mover puts on the final touch. Refuse is covered with a layer of clean earth. No flies, no rodents. Good enough? No, there was room for improvement. The engineers next tackle the idea of compressing garbage underground in one continuous move. For this development, King County received the ninth grant in the nation, provided by the United States Public Health Service, National Center for Urban Industrial Health. The grant for this specific purpose became known as the High Density Landfill Recovery Program. Timon Fixie designed the machine that was ultimately called the Mole. Refuse is dumped directly into a hopper that accepts 100 cubic yards at a time. The hydraulically actuated piston exerts 200 pounds per square inch of pressure over its seven by seven foot face. This compresses the refuse under one and a half million pounds of thrust, which extrudes it out the rear of the machine 15 feet underground. No one ever sees it again. The mole is capable of lifting itself by its bootstraps so that it may be towed into its working position in a trench. The mole moves forward on the freewheeling tracks each time the piston goes into its compression stroke. In one simple move, it is compressed underground to one-tenth of its original volume. And this was the prime purpose of the high-density landfill recovery program to create a landfill that is as firm as the land itself. This could mean many things under many varied conditions. The mole is portable. Swampy areas could be reconstituted into worthwhile, usable land. The mole can be moved over substandard roads. It may be hidden behind an attractive enclosure right in the city, if need be and transform untenable sections into functional beauty spots. To bring in earth merely to fill land is almost prohibitively expensive. The mole may easily accomplish its work unobtrusively. High-density landfill represents an entirely new concept that could revolutionize refuse disposal practices in many of our cities.
To be able to neatly dispose of refuse, while at the same time creating usable land, we feel is the only sensible method to really put waste away.